Hey designers, it's Ashley again, and this time I'll be showing you how to add a realistic letterpress effect to your designs in Photoshop. Please note, this technique is easiest to master on designs that feature a light-colored background, as letterpressing on a dark background requires a thorough understanding of this technique and a few more steps. First, start by opening the design you wish to apply a letterpress effect to in Illustrator. Move all the graphics you would like to have letterpress to a layer that is separate from the background. Name this layer Graphics. Second, create a layer above the graphics layer and name it Border. On this layer, place a box that extends beyond the edges of your artboard on all four sides. Make the center of the box transparent, but make sure the border has a color selected. This border will help keep your graphics properly centered when you open them in Photoshop. Next, hide all layers except your border layer and your graphics layer and save as a PDF file. Name your file Graphics. After that, open a new Photoshop document set up in the dimensions of your design file and add a paper texture to the first layer. Place the graphics PDF file that you just created on the layer above your paper texture. For the purposes of this tutorial, we will use this white paper texture as our background, as the letterpress effect is most easily achieved with a white background. Go ahead and change the blend mode of your graphics layer to Multiply from the Layer Blend Mode menu above. Now, we will create the illusion that the graphics have been pressed into the paper. With the graphics layer selected, go down to the FX button and select Inner Shadow. Under the Inner Shadow settings, you'll want to adjust the color, angle, distance, and size to make a soft inner shadow. First, select the color of your inner shadows. If your graphics layer is a single color, you will want to select a deeper shade of that color. Use the eyedropper tool and move the color picker diagonally down into the right of your color. If you have a multicolor design on your graphics layer, selecting a gray or brown often works well. After selecting your color, turn off global light. Now, adjust the angle and opacity of your shadow. Set your opacity to 35% and your angle to 126 degrees. I have found that setting the angle between roughly 125 degrees and 180 degrees works well in most situations. After that, adjust your distance and spacing or size depending on which version of Photoshop you are working in. Since letterpress designs are typically very shallow, you'll want to keep your distance and spacing small. For this design, I will set both the distance and spacing to 5 pixels. Lastly, set your spread to 0. At this point, you have created the illusion of depth with an inner shadow, but will also want to add a highlight as well. With the Layer Style menu still open, select Drop Shadow. With a few easy adjustments, we can turn our drop shadow into a highlight directly opposite from our inner shadow. First, change the blend mode from Multiply to Normal and change your shadow color to white. Set your opacity to 100%, then turn off Global Light. After that, set your angle to the same angle as your inner shadow. In this case, we will set the angle to 126 degrees. Lastly, adjust the distance, spacing, and spread to be a similar size as your inner shadow. Here, I will set the distance and spacing to 9 pixels and the spread back to 0 pixels. Hit OK. We now have our inner shadow and our highlight, and right now our letterpress effect is looking pretty good. There's one last step to make our letterpress effect look truly realistic, and that is to add one more drop shadow coming off of the opposite side, which will help soften our inner shadow and make that pressed edge look just slightly rounded. In order to do this, we'll need to create a new group and move our graphics layer into this group. Now, add a drop shadow to the group itself. Remember a few steps ago when we turned off global light on both our inner shadow and drop shadow? Because we turned off global light, you should now be able to change the direction of the drop shadow on the group without affecting the direction of the shadows within the group. Now, rotate the angle of your new drop shadow to roughly 180 degrees of your previous shadows. In this example, I will set the shadow to negative 31 degrees. Next, change the blend mode to multiply and select soft gray color. I found that using the eyedropper tool to select my background color first and then deepening that color slightly typically works best. 
Lastly, bring your distance in slightly to about 3 pixels, set your size to 7 pixels, and hit OK. You should now have a very soft gray shadow coming off the left-hand side of your design. The combination of all of your shadows and highlights should now realistically mimic the way light travels across a piece of letterpress paper. Congrats! You've now learned the technique for achieving a realistic letterpress effect in a digital design.